Hey, hey, whoo, this melody is insane. A Tulane on the beat. What's up everyone, this is Ed Talenti, how are you guys doing? Welcome to the video. Today we're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff, but the first order of the day, the first thing that I have to do is finishing some of the mixes that people ordered during the past week. Also at some point in this video, I'm gonna announce a beat making contest for you guys, so make sure to watch the video all the way through and don't miss out on the announcement. This one is finished. Mix number two is finished. Let's talk about this contest real quick. So, this is gonna be a beat making contest. I'm gonna make a melody, which we're actually gonna do as soon as I'm done talking right now. We're gonna make it together. I'm gonna make a melody, I'm gonna put it in a link in the description, and you guys can go download it, and your job is to flip it. There are no rules whatsoever other than using the melody. So you can do whatever you want, no limits on genres, nothing like that, go crazy. So the deadline for this contest is gonna be one week from now, Saturday the 7th, September 7th. So as long as you submit by September 7th included, you're good. Also in the description, I'm gonna put all the info on how to submit. It's gonna be pretty simple, but just in case, it's gonna be down there. Now to the fun part. Every good contest needs to have a prize. So there are actually two prizes for this contest. The top three people that I'm gonna end up picking are gonna win a copy of my drum set. I'm just gonna send it to them for free and it's gonna be dope. The person that wins the contest, number one, on top of the drum set is also gonna win a collaboration beat with me. So they can just send me a melody and I'm gonna work on the beat, we're gonna work on it together and we're gonna turn it into something super dope. So yeah, these are all the details for the contest. I'm really excited to hear what you guys are gonna cook up. Uh, let's go make the melody. All right, I'm gonna keep working a little bit longer, but it's basically done and you guys will find it in the description. Let's talk about arranging beats now. Arranging beats is something that it's like super important when you're trying to sell the beats or just when you're trying to like convey a certain type of energy. The whole key is to keep that tension release. The whole key is to not make it boring and to always have this kind of like flow that someone can just like kind of listen to and they can grasp onto it and they can always feel like excited about what's coming next. So when it comes to modern music like pop, trap, hip hop, maybe like even EDM and stuff, you can probably categorize arranging into two big groups. You have the first group, which is like the songs with the more like classic structure. So you have maybe like an A section, a B section, and then you have like a bridge at some point. So there's still like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, whatever, but they are actually different sections. Like they have a different chord progression or they have just completely different melody. Uh, they just have like different stuff. When it comes to trap and hip hop though, uh, there's not really an A and B section. Like especially these days, it's usually just the same thing over and over, but with changes in energy. So today we're gonna talk about this kind of arranging, the one with just one section that's one continuous 
continuous flow with just shifts in energy. So in order to achieve these like energy switches, these energy like shifts, the best way to do it is do what I like to call subtractive arranging. So you take one section, which is probably like the chorus, where you have all the instruments, like they are all playing at the same time. You have all your melodies, you have your 808, you have all your drums, your percussions, you have everything going at the same time. And then you strip it down. So you copy it over and just delete some things to empty it out for the verse. Then once you've done that, you kind of rebuild it up, building up to the second chorus. So you have this like up and down of energy. You have like everything, a lot less, a little bit more, a little bit more, everything again, and then it repeats. We're gonna take the beat that we made in the last video, the one with the flute, the one that I did like a couple days ago, and I haven't arranged that yet completely. I, I just did like an intro and like the drop for you guys, but I haven't arranged the full thing. So we're just gonna strip it down to a chorus and we're gonna rearrange it beginning to end together. Let's do it. All right, here we go. So if you go and listen to most songs these days and pay attention to the structure, you realize that a lot of them have like a very consistent structure. So they have intro, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, maybe like a bridge, chorus, out. One thing that we're not gonna do today, but it helped me a lot when I started learning how to arrange my beats, was to import acapellas from like songs that sounded similar to the one I was making. Just putting the acapella on one track, just like layered with the beat, and then just shaping the beat around that acapella. So you already know that it's gonna be shaped around the song and it's gonna make sense. Today we're not gonna do that though, we're just gonna arrange it with no external help. So what I have here right now already done, which is what I did uh, a couple days ago, I have the intro and I have the chorus. So the intro starts with this flute melody by itself. For four bars. Then the next four bars of the intro, I bring in a little counter melody and I bring in some filter drums, just to kind of like start building the energy and arrive to the chorus. So that's the first eight bars, that's my whole intro. Then we get into the chorus, which is the part with everything turned on, all the melodies, all the drums, percussions, everything. So we're gonna keep this chorus eight bars long. Uh, that is pretty common and I feel like rappers are really comfortable with that eight bar chorus. So they can just kind of like freestyle over the track without having to study the structure first and just naturally they're gonna go into a verse after those eight bars. So that usually works out pretty nice and it makes everybody's job a lot easier. So now we went through our first chorus, it's time to start building the verse. So the way I like to do it, I literally just highlight everything that's in the chorus and I duplicate it two times. That's gonna give me a 16 bar verse right here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do right now, it's gonna be stripping down some stuff. Usually in the verse, the 808 kind of like disappears, so we're just gonna get rid of it. We're gonna get rid of the hi-hats to kind of like strip down the drums to just kick and snare and maybe some percussions, but just make him a little more sparse. Remember the goal here is to kind of empty out the beat so that we can rebuild it and build up to the second chorus. There's still a lot of stuff. I'm gonna get rid of some of these symbols in my drum rack, maybe like these guys and maybe this guy. I'm also gonna delete these two counter melodies for now. So we're just left with the flute and the bare drums. Now to keep it interesting throughout the verse and to not make it boring, uh, every four bars we want something new to come in or something new to change so that the beat stays fresh, the rapper always has something like new to grasp onto, and yeah, it's just kind of like more interesting to just kind of vibe off of. So this is where we have to make a decision. Is our verse gonna be 12 bars or is it gonna be 16 bars? That depends on the song, it depends on the type of beat, it depends on a lot of things. One way that I like to like measure and decide sometimes is I look at my intro, I look how long that is, if it's a four bar intro, I keep it four bars at the end of the verse as well. If it's an eight bar intro, I wanna keep it eight bars at the end of the verse. This doesn't apply every time, but for today we're gonna do this. So that means that the last eight bars of our verse, so eight through 16, we want them to just be the re-intro, like we bring the intro back in so that we can build up to the chorus, the same way we did at the beginning of the song. So I'm literally gonna get rid of all of this and I am going to copy over the intro and the chorus the same way they happened at the beginning of the song. These eight bars of like re-intro might get a little bit redundant, so you might wanna cut it down to four and just extend the verse a little bit. That's up to you and it's kinda of like case by case. But for now, for this beat, we're gonna leave it like this. So now we're at the chorus again, this is chorus number two. Now sometimes I like to add like an extra percussion or an extra like shaker loop, just something to make the first chorus different from the second chorus. So the second chorus has got something more. For this beat, I think it's gonna actually be fine like this, but it's just an extra tip to, to keep in mind if you wanna do that, if you wanna like add some energy and kind of keep it more fresh. So after chorus two, we're gonna do verse two. Once again, this is totally your personal decision. Uh, if you wanna change the structure of the verse, if you wanna keep it the same, I'm gonna keep it the same for this beat, but I'm gonna try to raise the energy a little bit compared to verse one. So I'm literally gonna copy over verse one, 
the way it already was. But I'm gonna start the first four bars with the symbols already in instead of taking them out. And the second four bars, I'm actually gonna bring in the hi-hat, which I didn't do earlier. Then after that, we're gonna go back into our intro once again, building up to chorus number three. Now, I really like songs that end with a double chorus. Uh, there's not really that many songs these days that have like three verses. Uh, and if you need an extra verse, you can always add it later. Generally, I like to keep the structure of my beats with two verses and I like to have three choruses. In the last chorus though, the one we're on now, uh, I like to do a normal chorus and then I like to put like a little breakdown in the middle, just like four bars of breakdown into like another chorus. So it's like a double chorus uh, with a little break in between, just to kind of like switch out the energy and just keep it more interesting. I feel like arranging is like this balancing exercise between keeping it fresh and keeping it like creative and fun to listen to and everything, but at the same time, keeping it really familiar for whoever's gonna sing on it to not just be lost. So you gotta always be able to balance that creative side and the common practice that makes everybody comfortable. Now, because I really like this melody and I think it's a really strong melody, I'm gonna add it to the end as an outro. So I'm just literally gonna copy the flute over and just have it to like end the song by itself. And the arrangement is done. So the very last step that I like to do before I go ahead and export the song is listening to it beginning to end, no pauses, and I just kind of like check the energy all the way through. I make sure that every part flows nicely into the next one. And if there are any awkward spots, I add maybe like a symbol or an effect or some sort of transition. Sometimes I like to mute drums on like the very last eighth note of the last bar so that it kind of like quiets down and then it hits right back on one. Uh, I feel like that's a really easy way to like adjust the energy if it doesn't flow, but just kind of like experiment with that and find what you like. All right, I really hope this video was helpful. A lot of people asked me about arranging beats and I hope I answered some of your questions. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I've got a lot planned for the month of September. I've got a giveaway coming up. I've got some really cool stuff, so subscribe. Also, if you haven't checked it yet, remember to check the description for all the details on how to enter the contest. If you have a question you wanna ask privately or you wanna say hi or whatever it is, Instagram is the best place to do that. Just shoot me a DM and as soon as I can, I will respond to you. For everything else, just leave a comment below. All right, I guess this is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching the video all the way through. I'll see you next time and as always, be positive and positive things will happen.